Why is there this desire to undermine such a great son of India, somebody who laid the foundations for what we have, uh, what we have created? You don't like socialism, fine, but you're not going to disavow the institutions that he created, as we said in the promo. That entire underpinning of India's scientific establishment. If today the government can boast about Mangalyan, ask who created ISRO? Who decided that even poor India could dare to aim for the skies? Who created the IITs that send so many bright young men to Silicon Valley so that 40% of the startups there are held by Indians? Who became the only prime minister in the world to attend these countries' Indian the National Science Congress every year and to speak there and to give respect and support to scientists? All of this in a poor country was optional. You had to have the vision to say we need to do all these things. We need to lay the foundations to build the India of the future. Nehruji was a star campaigner for the Congress, traveling up and down the length and breadth of the country. And it was noticed that he was soaking up the adulation of the masses. Wherever he went, throngs would come. And there was this tremendous admiration for this charismatic, youthful, vigorous figure. And um, shortly thereafter, a few months thereafter, there appeared in the Modern Review of Calcutta, which was the preeminent intellectual magazine of the era, an article anonymous, not attributed to anyone, attacking Nehru, saying this man could be dangerous. He enjoys mass adulation far too much. We want no Caesars. A man like him must be checked. Of course, the article created a bit of a buzz. People were curious as to who would have written this, this attack on Nehru, what it was all about. And in due course, in the fullness of time, not immediately, it emerged that the author of this anonymous attack on Jawaharlal Nehru was none other than Jawaharlal Nehru himself. And the reason was very clear. He wanted to issue this public warning both to himself and to the people of India. Don't let your head be swayed. The country matters more than the individual. The institutions and structures matter more than the, the uh, fame, the glory, the transient uh, uh, glamour that election victories will bring you. He was frequently lampooned by cartoonists and the leading cartoonist of the day, Shankar of Shankar's Weekly, Nehruji famously would call and ask for copies of some of the most savage cartoons about him that he could then hang up in his own house. At one occasion he met Shankar at a reception and said in the hearing of others, don't spare me Shankar. And the other thing about him was that he made, made it a point to give Shankar successively, successively the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan and the Padma Vibhushan. And this was a man who therefore wanted to see constructive criticism of his work and even particularly humorous criticism of his work. It's, it's, there's an apocry apocryphal story that I think I do quote in the book uh, about John Foster Dulles, uh, John, President Eisenhower's Secretary of State, who had famously or notoriously said that um, that uh, non-alignment, neutrality between good and evil is itself evil, he said. And, um, and the story goes that he asked Nehruji in a, in a question that has become more familiar to us on the lips of a more recent American figure. He allegedly said, are you with us or against us? And Nehruji smiled and replied, yes. <laughs> so we are with you when we agree with you, we are against you when we disagree. For 200 years, a foreign country has been taking decisions for us. We will now take our own decisions. It may sometimes be in your favor, it may sometimes be against you, but we will decide. You won't decide for us.